Mingala Ba Myanmar. Welcome everyone to my YouTube channel. This is Adi here and today I'm going to watch the geography of Myanmar which was previously known as Burma. It's a wonderful country, it's a beautiful country and more importantly I have traveled to Myanmar before. I love the place and you know right now a lot of tensions are going on in the country and you know I really feel sad for the people who are suffering there but I'm just hoping that things will be okay there and you know the reason why I wanted to do this um, reaction is because even though I've been to Myanmar and post when I came back to India after visiting Myanmar I got to know about a lot of things which I've missed during my travel there but nevertheless this is a very good moment right now to revive the history of Myanmar like how I have been doing it for the other countries so without wasting much time guys let's quickly jump over to the video and let's learn something new Myanmar there's a country called Myanmar never heard of it yes uh, you have no I really haven't you know what this is right uh, yeah that's a Burmese Python well huh. there you go Burmese well that's Burma yeah but Myanmar is Burma it's oh <laughs> You know guys, that's actually a true fact. I have come across many people from different countries when I actually tell them that I have been to Burma or Myanmar, they are like, Burma, is it, is it like a name of a country or it's a, it's a part of India? So there are a lot of people actually all around the globe, sadly, they are not aware of this country. But trust me guys, if you're watching this video for the first time and if you're hearing about Burma aka Myanmar for the first time, the people there are really amazing. There are a lot of things that you can learn if you are traveling to Myanmar. It's time to learn geography. Now! By the way, guys, this is Kale's wife, Jillian. Say hi. Hi, guys. I was looking for this. Hey, everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Welcome to Southeast Asia's tenacious older sister. She likes to do what she wants and don't tell her to change anything, unless if it's her name, then she's totally down. Over the years, Myanmar has gone through quite a few interesting chapters, and it all begins in the humid rainforest of the Irrawaddy River. Let's begin. <laughs> The view close yeah, to the Irrawaddy is so amazing. It's pretty much the bridge that links the Indian subcontinent to China and Southeast Asia. And it's interesting to see the role that they play in the geopolitical atmosphere. First of all, the country is located in Southeast Asia, bordered by five other countries with a coast along the Andaman Sea and broader Bay of Bengal. They even have a long slice of the Kra Isthmus, part of the peninsula that is shared by three countries. Here, the southernmost mainland area, Khao Tong, can be found. However, on the coasts, the country has over 800 islands and the territory extends further south. The southernmost point is here. Here, Christie Island. If you go just a bit north though, the largest island, Kadan Kyun, is located. Keep in mind these small islands known as the Cocos, just off the Andaman Islands belonging to India, are also Myanmar's territory. The country is divided into 21 administrative divisions. This is where things get a little tricky. First, there are seven states and seven regions. They are considered equivalent and the only distinction is that the states typically have an ethnic minority, whereas regions have the largest majority group, the Bamar Burmese people. Within these two areas, the Shan State and the Sagaing region, five self-administered zones and one self-administered division exist. These are kind of strange areas that are led by a chairman nominated by the armed forces. It's kind of confusing. Finally, the newly moved and constructed capital of Nepyada, the third largest city in the country, acts as its own union territory. The largest city is actually Yangon in the south, which was the capital for the longest time. I have been to Yangon guys, such a marvelous city, trust me, really loved it there. It even holds the largest international airport, Yangon International, as well as the largest oh my God, I've been there. the Myanmar Port Authority. Otherwise, the second largest city is Mandalay up north, which was also the last royal capital. And I've the been second to Mandalay airport Palace as well also. lies here, Mandalay International. Whew. That's Apart amazing. from all that, Myanmar actually has a pretty well interconnected rail system that goes to virtually every corner of the country. The vast majority of the people live along the Irrawaddy River and River Delta that flows into the ocean to the south where Yangon lies. Fun fact, the capital, Nepyada, which means the abode of the king, is actually a young planned city. And it's funny because there's no official reason as to why the city was built. Some people might say things like, Oh, it was built further up north to centralize the seat of legislation and give stability to all states and regions. Nah, we built it to avoid avoid cyclones, come on, safety first, you know? No, Yangon was too crowded and they just told a bunch of people to get out and move there. Actually, it was a passion project by this guy. 
sky, and he used a series of lucky numbers and fortune tellers to determine the area it should be built on. Well, either way, at over 4,800 square kilometers in size, it's huge, but in return, it has a pretty low population density, and it has this eerie looking empty 20 lane highway. And speaking of places that stick out in Myanmar, some spots of interest you might want to check out if you visit might include the Inwa Ruins, the Pagoda of Holy Snakes, the second largest bell in the world, this uh, large oh reclining God, Buddha, the Shwanan Da Kyung Temple, Yang Ohak Jungle Temple Village, this temple in Mandalay, the world's largest book carved in stones, Bokyoke Market, Tao Chan War Cemetery, the Independence Monument, the Golden Rock, Shwegadon Pagoda, and probably the most famous landmark, the ancient city of Bagan with over 2200 temples. You can even ride hot air balloons and observe it from above. Absolutely breathtaking. Of course, one reason why they are so breathtaking is because the buildings are surrounded by lush vegetation all over the country, which brings us to... Now, the best way I can put it, if you look at Myanmar's layout physically, it kind of looks like a spilling bowl. Let me explain. The country is basically surrounded on all sides from their neighbors by various mountain chains. You have the Arakan, Yoma, and Qing Hills in the southwest, the Naga Hills and Hengduan Mountains, part of the larger Himalayas in the north, where the tallest peak in all of Southeast Asia, Hakakaborazi, can be found. Then there's the Shan Plateau, the Karen Hills, as well as the Dana and Tanasarim Hills in the south. That means the central interior of Myanmar is generally flat, with incredibly lush valleys fed by the long and most important river of the country, the Irrawaddy, sourced by the snow melt and springs of the Himalayas up north. Speaking of the north, the largest natural lake in the country can be found here, Indogi Lake. It also has a cool pagoda on it. Unfortunately, Myanmar is kind of smashed right in between the Sunda and Indian plates, right off the Burma microplate in the ocean, and the entire lush center of the country lies on the Sagain Fault Line, which is subject to occasional earthquakes. A recent one in 2016 destroyed or damaged over 170 ancient temples in Bagan. In addition though, this also gives Myanmar some geothermal activity. The country contains some of the few rare mud volcano spots in the world, mostly near the town of Minbu. Mud volcanoes, huh? We should hang out sometime. Yeah, there's lots of stuff going on, but as you know, it's time for me and our triple shot espresso break, which means Noah comes in and fills in for the rest of this segment. Ahem. Me and our triple shot espresso break. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot about the whole bad pun thing. Hey -ya! There. See, yeah. was that so hard? Thank you. Production-wise, Myanmar is loaded with various resources and industries. More notably though, they are known for producing precious stones like high-quality sapphires, pearls, jades, and rubies. Wait, don't they have a pagoda made out of jade? Yes, they do. Dope. And the country alone supplies about 90% of the world's rubies, mostly found in high concentrated deposits around the north area of Mandalay. The country has an incredibly diverse flora and fauna, over 300 mammals including the famous Burmese white elephant, 100 bird species including the national bird the peacock, and 300 species of reptile. One interesting side note, Myanmar is part of the broader region known as the Golden Triangle. In a nutshell, this is basically the largest drug production region of Southeast Asia. Most of it lies in the Shan state. To this yes, day, I've heard Myanmar about is this. actually the largest producer of methamphetamines in the world, used for both medicine and illegal recreation. In addition, they are also the second largest producer of opium after Afghanistan. Eh, what can I say? It grows well here. According to the Bangkok Post, the illegal trade is estimated to produce about $2 billion annually, or somewhere around 40% of their foreign exchange alone, which is pretty high. Finally, food! Some dishes you guys of Burmese Jogger Pizza have mentioned might include dishes like La Pet, Monti, Coconut Noodles, Papiot Tamin, so many different curries, these desserts, and of course the national dish you can find pretty much anywhere, Mohinga. You forgot to mention that Tanaka, am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, Tanaka. Tanaka stuff. It's like the sunscreen they make from tree bark and like everyone puts it on their faces. Yep, that too. <laughs> Dope. And that's just one of the many cultural traits you'll find here. Which brings us to... Thank you, Noah. Uh, by the way, one of our fans from Canada sent fan mail and they want to give you these Arnold Schwarzenegger socks. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. I'll be back. Now, Myanmar's people are honestly some of the most fascinating in the world because there's over 130 ethnic groups in the country. Each one kind of retains some kind of unique trait untouched by contemporary values. First of I all, had the no country idea has about somewhere around one. 56 million people and has one of the lowest energy consumption rates per capita in all of Asia. Out of the many ethnic groups, the largest ones are the Burman or Bamar at about 68%, next are the Shan at about 9%, the Karen at about 7%, the Rakhine at about 4%, and the rest are made up of the remaining 130 groups with a notice 
noticeable Chinese and Indian community. For their currency, they use the chat. Yes, in Burmese romanization, KY makes a ch sound. They use the type C, D, F, and G plug outlets. And surprisingly, even though they were a former British colony and some of their neighbors like India and Thailand drive on the left side, they actually drive on the right side of the road. But it's weird because most of their cars still have right hand side steering. Now, before we go forward, let's clear something up. What is the title you give someone from Myanmar? Why, thank you for asking, Ken. Most people from Myanmar are They're called Burmese, Burmese, which is just another name for the Bamar yeah. majority people group. This is also why the country was called Burma in the past. However, not everybody in the country is Burmese ethnically. So if you meet somebody from Myanmar that is not Burmese, you can call them by whatever group they belong to, like the Karen or the Shan. Or if you really want to play it safe, the general title for anybody from Myanmar is Myanmar. But wait, then what is the language they speak in Myanmar? Wow, you have such inquisitive pep today, Ken. Thank you for asking as well. They speak the language of the majority group Burmese. The Burmese language is a unique tongue unrelated to any of their neighbors. Linguists say that maybe it's a distant cousin of Tibetan, but for now it's kind of its own thing. And it's written in a strange weird script that looks like alien bubbles. You could stare at it for hours. Hmm. We should hang out sometime. Faith-wise, the country is predominantly Buddhist at somewhere around 88%, most adhering to the Theravada branch of teaching. And Buddhism plays a huge role in the culture. You see it literally everywhere. Monks, temples, pagodas, statues. It's incredibly Buddhist. Nonetheless, about 6.2% are Christians, mostly among the Kachin, Chin, and Kain peoples. Islam is practiced by about 4%, mostly by the Kamen, Pante, and Pashu Malays. And also the most notable one that makes up the news articles, the Rohingya. In regards to the Rohingya, yes, I know it's a very messy, tricky subject to cover and that would take way too long to explain in this episode so I made a whole other video for you guys to use as context check it out otherwise let's move on <laughs> came prepared for this one yes I did otherwise Myanmar kind of has a long history of keeping things to themselves and maintaining their own way of life minimizing outside influence I mean they are one of the only three countries that doesn't completely at least use the metric system yeah we're still in it together guys Woo! No today they still use the traditional Burmese measuring units in many parts of the country which are hard to explain Plane. For example, a lan is 6 feet long, a ngase ta is 1.8 pounds, a la mu is 2.7 fluid ounces, and so on. And in 2013, the country's Minister of Commerce announced that they would prepare the country to adopt the metric system over time. It's like... You're going. Oh, no, no you're coming over here. This is America! Oh, no. Just yeah. And now let's talk about some culture stuff. And you know what, Caleb and Jillian, just take this because I've been on camera for so long and you guys just kind of sit in the corner doing nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Culturally speaking, there are too many things to list with the various ethnic groups of Myanmar. You have things like... The silver jewelry of the Jingpo people. Flowery headdresses of women from the Lisu Hill tribe. The Kaya people and their sashes. The Mon this people and their music. Well -made the Austronesian documentary, Mokin guys. I mean, the Rakhine and... Trust me, this is such a well-made documentary. I mean, like, there's so many informations here. Whoa. Actually, honestly speaking, yeah, I did not know a lot of things here. Thank you, guys. Thank you for this wonderful video and their coastal flair. The Shan and their cuisine and costumed performances. The Pao and their fire rocket festival. The Wa people and their water buffalo sacrifice tradition. And the Taron people. There are only about five left in the world and they average around four feet tall. And finally, you've probably seen pictures of the famous Padong people with their brass ringed long necked women that stretch their collarbones to give off the image of a long neck. Uh, these people are also there. This community is also there in the country of Laos, right, if I'm not wrong. Maybe they're also in Burma, but also in Laos, right? Traditionally seen as a sign of beauty. Some nationwide shared aspects amongst the people might include things like Chinlone, considered one of the nation's sports. It's like a wicker ball hacky sack type of game with six players. There's also Letwe. It's like Muay Thai, but even crazier, because you can use your head when fighting. Jeez. <laughs> Many people wear their traditional long yi on a daily basis. It can be folded and used in many ways like pants or even an umbrella. Today the nation is a unitary parliamentary constitutional republic. 2011 was a big year for political restructuring. However, the military-backed party still holds a high level of power to this day, making things a little bit complicated. Historically though, there were many kingdoms and royal Burmese households. Although the royal throne was abolished in 1885, the descendants of the throne are still alive today and known as monarch Pretenders. Today, this guy is the head of the royal house of Kongbong, currently the heir to the throne of Burma. Even though it doesn't matter and really does nothing for the country. Thanks guys, you had your screen time. I've proven that I'm inclusive. I'll take it from here. What about me? Do I get any more lines? Uh, I mean, if you want, you can take this next part where we explain the history, but it's all voiceover and montages.
Okay. In the quickest way we can condense the history of Myanmar, Hindu and animist kingdoms, Buddhism comes in, the Pew, Little Bagan Kingdom, Big Bagan Kingdom, Mongol Invasion, Tonggu Empire, Small Kingdoms, Kongbang Dynasty, Sino-Burma Wars, a lot of Burma Siam Wars, Big Kongbang Kingdom, British come in, one big war and two small wars with the British, boom, colonial time, World War II, kick British overlords out with Japan, crap, Japan is worse, they go back to the British and fight off Japan, independence, coup, socialism, name change, protest, military rule, 2011 democracy again, uh, kind of, Rohingya stuff, again, check out the video, and here we are today. Thank you, Ken. Uh, why not just do the notable people section? Uh, why not? I already gotten this far anyways. Some notable people either from Myanmar or Burmese Myanmar descent might include people like these kings, Bokyoke Aung San, Neto, these artists, Suk Bahadur, this actress, Aung La Aung San, Sasai Kamleng, and of course, everyone has now heard of Aung San Suu Kyi. People with known Burmese heritage abroad include celebrities like Bollywood actress Helen, Peter Badakan, Jamie Cullum, Zuleika Robinson, Morisaki Wee, Wendy La Young, and Richard Beckinsdale was also quarter Burmese, so his daughter's Kate is an aide, so still counts. Yeah, Kate Beckinsdale, out of all the people. Yeah, British Empire, go figure. I mean, I'm a product of the Korean War, so I get it. And I'm a product of parents I met at a party with questionable life choices. Let's not talk about it. And speaking of countries that interact with Myanmar. Now, Myanmar is funny because, politically speaking, they are, for lack of a better term, a little intense with domestic policy, but they have lots of business and trade, so they always kind of end up interacting with the outside world no matter what. It's like, ah, my arm is stuck in a bear trap! but I'll have a triple shot latte. First of all, China and India have both had their ups and downs with Myanmar. For India, things started great as they worked together to fight drug trafficking and many of the same tribes of the northern states share family across the Indian border. Roads were built to connect the isolated provinces and trade is pretty that's, strong. They are the that's a very famous spot in India and Myanmar border because you know when I see a lot of travelers from India, every time they're going on a bike ride, you know, so they will always click a picture right next to this place. It's like quite famous. Fourth, fourth largest, largest trading, trading partner and, and second, second largest, largest export market. market. Things, Things got, got a little strained, strained though when India, India supported the democratic movement and condemned the arrest of Aung San Suu Kyi, but, but today things are better. With China, there, there were some border wars, wars in the past, and Myanmar doesn't, doesn't really like the whole Tibet annexation thing. There were some anti-Chinese riots in the 60s, but then in the 80s, they gave lots of money and supplies to the ruling military junta. They also agreed to build a Chinese intelligence base on Great Coco Island, and now Myanmar acts as kind of like China's closest eyes and ears to help monitor activity in the Indian Ocean, which is kind of like a slap in the face to India as they kind of gave Myanmar those islands. As a member of ASEAN, or the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, they generally get along with all their other Southeast Asian neighbors. Historically, Thailand is like the sister that they always kind of get into fights with and argue over small things. They used to hate each other, but today, in modern times, they realize that when they work together, they can make tons of money and cooperate well. They are the largest trading partner. About 80% of Thailand's migrant workers are from Myanmar, and trade is important between them. Nonetheless, every so often and they might throw a few rocks here and there. On a personal level though, many people I have spoken to have said that, oddly enough, Japan might be considered their best friend. Tons of Japanese companies have opened up in Myanmar, giving them jobs and education opportunities. Tons of Japanese volunteers come over to help the poor and orphaned kids, building schools and hospitals. And in general, Japan has kind of acted as like the mediator that has never really had any crazy drama with them. Everybody in the country generally has high regards for the Japanese. In conclusion, Myanmar is a place where Buddhism and beauty meet earthquakes and conflict. Conflict, vibrant colors, sounds, taste, but with a slight stressful twitch in their eye. Either way, they are Myanmar. This is, is this is really interesting, guys. I mean, like, whoa. I mean, um, what do I say? I mean, like, irrespective of all the political tensions that you know we all are going through. I mean, like, we are in this age where you know a lot of you know countries are fighting against each other, blah blah, and stuff like this. But let's not deviate from the historical point of view. You know. As a human being, I believe that we should promote peace and we should always respect each other's culture that I have been taught to and I'll continue to do that. It's kind of really good because you know Southeast Asia is a storehouse of knowledge and wisdom and there are a lot of histories involved. I know every country around the world has its own history but as I started this journey of YouTube like my, when I started this reaction video channel you know my whole point was to you know, cover uh, you know different um, musicians artists you know underrated bands from all around the globe but as the, as time is going by i'm realizing that you know there are so many you know uh, 
things that I can cover through this channel and I'm really happy to for all the people who are watching my videos and putting down your wonderful comments this really means a lot to me you know what do you guys think about Burma do let me know I have been there and to be honest you know I just maybe knew 40% of what they have told the remaining 60% was completely new to me honestly because I knew about the tribes but not exactly how many tribes you know the communities which are still there in Burma and this is so amazing man this has been amazing I would love to go to the country again such a nice and wonderful place and do let me know guys in the comment section what do you think about this video and what are your thoughts on um, Burma uh, so I'll come back again with another video until then guys take care stay safe Mingalaba and Namaste